starting to look like this next MacBook Pro is going to be the MacBook we're sorry. It's going to be the MacBook we were wrong because we already talked about the fact that they're maybe probably moving away from the touch bar. We already know the fact they went to an older style keyboard design. Yesterday we talked about, or maybe two days ago, that they were going to go back to having a MagSafe connector. Today's report, we're going to put an SD card in there. An SD card reader. So this was a long experiment for them. No, you know what it was, Will? Let me tell you what happened. They let everybody go and buy the minimalist design. Figure out how much they missed having features. Uh Uh-huh. So that now when this one comes out and gives them all the features back, they rush out like crazy real quick to pick those up. So it's our fault. That's right. Yeah. I blame you, Willie Do. Yeah. I definitely (laughs) need an SD card reader. How nice would it be to just have an SD card reader? Maybe they do something even crazier and put an HDMI port, and that would be just fantastic. Let's not get too The type of stuff we're asking for here. Analyst Ming-Chi, quote, outlined his expectations for the new 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro models. Coming later this year with the Mag- MagSafe charging connector, the removal of the touch bar, a new flat edge design, and the return of more ports built into the notebook for expanded connectivity. Mm. I mean, I'm so sick of docks and I'm so sick of dongles. Yeah. Today I mean, on the MacBook Air, I watched Mo have to pull out the docking station and everything else. He was tangled up in wires. He had wires because he needed the SD and he wanted to connect an Ethernet. And I don't think we're going to get an Ethernet jack on here, but still. So the next, the SD card uh, part of it, it comes from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman. The upcoming MacBook Pro is an example of Apple's renewed focus on Mac loyalists. The company is planning to bring back an SD card slot for the next MacBook Pro so users can insert memory cards from digital cameras. Yeah, that's what you do with an SD card slot. The feature was removed all the way back in 2016. We're in 2021. Now, this is kind of unlike Apple, but who knows? You never know what they're going to do. Remember when they went for the trash can Mac Pro, for example, and then they completely backed off the next time around. Mm-hmm. They, there were some issues. People wished that they had more ability to upgrade that device switch out GPUs and things. Just a tr- They wanted a traditional design. And then, so Apple went right back to the tower, the regular style tower. So I think it's the right move. I don't think, I think if you had a, you had a plan and things didn't really pan out, then that's fine. You know, you admit it and you move on. This trash can was kind of cute, but it just, it wasn't ready for prime time. We have the rumor that the next model could be a little cube, but that they're probably going to keep the full size tower as well as an option, but this is about the MacBook Pros. Now, the 2015 MacBook Pro, not only did it have an SD card reader, it also had an HDMI port and USB-A ports, which I know this is the kind of stuff that your most pleasant dreams are filled with, Will. Oh, the sweet, sweet port All kinds of ports. (laughs) Yeah. We'll see what happens, but this is a nice little touch here. I know it would be compelling to me, and it's kind of sad to say that it's compelling to get something back that you already had and something that's on, does this one have, this one must have it. Yeah, of course. This, this, look at this laptop, okay? This is a workstation laptop, Lenovo X1 Extreme 15 inch. It has a smart card reader, an SD card slot, USB-A, USB-A, other side, headphone jack, ethernet connector, HDMI port, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 3. So many options. Yeah. And I I realize it's a larger laptop, but they're going to do a 16-inch. This also has a 4K display, which is touch. There's, like, let's just be honest. There's more that Apple can do, and I sure hope that they do it. All right, next up, we have myself reaching my free article limit. So I'm going to read it on yours. It's one more subscription I have to get, Seeking Alpha. I do read Seeking Alpha often, and it is... A uh, free subscription. I think this might be... uh, Oh, for you as uh, well? Let me see how quickly I can register here. It probably shouldn't take too long. I'll do it with Google, in fact. Oh. And that should just take all of uh, maybe two seconds here because they're not going to ask me for money. But since we started this news show, I have been supporting 
so many different news sites, Will. You have no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't mind, to be honest, because it keeps me in the loop, so to speak. Yeah, and you want to support them, too. Apple could show dramatic they let me in but then but then they kind of screwed me up because they made me go back to the article all over again but anyway i'm here now no i'm not was this about yes here we go it's the margins i'm in i registered shout out seeking alpha i'm a okay. real boy now all right well we'll just have to Follow what you say. Because you didn't register fast. So I was speedier than the speediest, which is Willie Do. Mm -hmm. I was speedier. All right, let me break it down for you. iPhone 12 cost Apple more money to make. And I know you're probably not surprised by that. You said, okay, well, they charge more money for it, so it probably costs more to make. Now, the problem is for Apple, which I don't think is that big of a problem, but the problem is that it has it bit into their margin, mm. right? And... They're used to having a nice, healthy margin. I'll tell you what. They let you in now? Here, they, oh. they let you in. That's nice. What's happening? Apple here? protects its margin like crazy. It's one of the best in the business. It is the best in the business. In a smartphone game, Apple's mar margin is unbelievable. And the way that you track this margin is with the BOM, bomb. And that's the bill of materials. It has increased massively due to the 5G feature and the better screens on the iPhone 12. Now, they charged more money for it, but not enough to cover the difference between the iPhone 11. So let me break it down for you. Bill of materials for iPhone 12 is 21% higher than iPhone 11. Shift from LCD to OLED, uh, costing $23 more. 5G modem and RF system led to an increase in the cost by $34. Very important features for a modern smartphone, and the 12 had to carry it. The iPhone segment contributes 50% of revenue to Apple, so a drop in the margins here could affect their profitability as a company pretty significantly. Actually, there's a nice little graph as well. You know I like an infograph. Shout out CounterPoint Research. This showcases where the money was spent for an overall bomb increase, cost increase of $72. Obviously, the RF components for the 5G and the connectivity, the display is another big player. Some things they saved money on, the RAM, storage, power management components, but they didn't save all that much. Look, waterproofing, sensors. So it wasn't enough to make up for that large gap created by that new equipment that's in there. So the effect here is that even though you're selling a more expensive phone, the iPhone 11 had a starting price of $699, with contract and iPhone 12 with contract, $799. So the price only grew 14%, but Apple's cost grew by over 20%. You mm. see where I'm going here, Will? Mm. Few less bucks for Apple themselves. Now, keep in mind, they sold other models and they sold large volumes of other models, including those pro models. And I would presume that the cost on those devices or the margin, I should say, would might be more substantial. But it is worth noting, they're coming out with their earnings report. A lot of people are invested in Apple who watch this show. I don't know if you knew that. So they, yeah. they, they need to know stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what that means for their bottom line very shortly. Speaking of Apple's bottom line, I don't know that they're all that happy with their Apple TV Plus product. They only have 3% market share in the U.S. last quarter. Netflix, of course, still in first place. Going to take a while for any player to close in on Netflix. They had such a head start. It's unbelievable. But, you know, Apple spent money on content, and I don't know what it is, but it just doesn't seem like there's been all that much adoption. I'm not talking about I don't hear you talking about it. I really don't hear a lot of buzz about it. It doesn't seem like there's a breakout show that people are tweeting about or telling me I got to see, but they spent money, so I don't know what the problem is. Maybe there's a hot show on there. Somebody let me know what's the best show on Apple TV Plus. But anyway, if you head back to the article, Just Watch has an incredible graphic that you're going to love, which breaks it all down in pretty colors, Will, which is, well, you know, I love that. And it showcases Netflix's 31% dominance in this chart. This is quarter four in the United States 2020. Prime Video comes in at second, 
with 22%, Hulu at 14, Disney 13, new player obviously, HBO Max new product as well, 9%. Peacock beats Apple TV Plus wow. with a 6% share and then other occupies 2% to Apple TV Plus is 3%. So it is a really insignificant amount of the entire streaming marketplace, but they're brand new as well. And they don't have the content catalog or the brand recognition and content that somebody like Disney or HBO does. So you got to believe. And then HBO got the boost from the Hollywood movies. People talking about it. Disney Plus had Mandalorian. I think Apple TV Plus needs that one show. They need that one breakout show that people are talking about. And maybe they're going to get there. I think they hoped it was going to be that morning show. Yeah. Did you watch any of that? No. Me either. No. I heard it. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. But, I mean, I can't speak on it because I didn't watch it. But mm -hmm. obviously it didn't break through into my universe like so many things that show up in my news feed or end up in front of me. So it means something. And it looks like they've got some work to do on streaming, but they are new to the game. Now, another place that Apple is concentrating, as you're well aware at least all the speculation is pointing in this direction, is the Apple car. We have an article here on Axios. What we know so far about the Apple car, it's been a little bit of back and forth. We talked about the potential partnership with the likes of Magna or Hyundai, and then Hyundai passing off to Kia to potentially develop the car in the United States because they have a plant there. Uh, Apple has been hiring. They've been on a bit of a hiring spree. Remember we talked about they took... A uh, few executives with past work history over at Tesla, which would tell you something as well. The big conversation right now is still around whether or not they are going to even end up doing a full physical car with an Apple badge or if it is some sort of other automotive plan, whether it's self-driving tech, a particular component, or possibly even a car service like an autonomous car service of some kind, which I hear you. I hear these rumors. I understand some of these other things would be easier plays out the gate because we know it's difficult to make a quality vehicle. We also know that those margins we talked about earlier with the smartphones are definitely not the same in the automotive business. That's a tougher place to go in and make some money, and investors could be nervous about that. My take, I say make the whole car, do the whole thing, top to bottom. If you look at the energy around Tesla, people are ready for new brands in automotive, particularly around tech and tech features, EVs, and autonomous stuff. Now, one thing you got to remember, as much as I sound encouraging and optimistic here, Will, is that if you come out with an autonomous product, you open yourself up to all those stories that Tesla has to deal with, where one thing goes wrong across 100,000 or 500,000 vehicles, and all of a sudden this press comes along, and all of a sudden these stories. Because a, a vehicle is a moving thing. You know what a moving thing with that weight can do? It can injure people, mm -hmm. including the people inside of it who are their customers. Apple doesn't really have to deal with that right now. No. They always come out rosy because they're just in your pocket. Yeah, very low risk, mm. the products that they make. I mean, they don't really injure a lot of people. I mean, think about the car ins insurance business. Massive. Yeah. You think about the money you pay just to insure your vehicle because of all the things that can go wrong. Uh -huh. Does Apple want exposure in that place when they have such a strong brand, which seems to be uh, invincible? Yeah. I mean, it isn't, obviously. Things go wrong with anything, but cars are just a different level of consequence. I still think you do it. Tim Cook, I'm looking at you. Let's have some fun. I'll help you out. Phone lines are open. Here we have a new device from Vivo packing a Snapdragon 888. Apparently, it's going to rival the oh. S21 Ultra, which is no easy task, I'll tell you what. This is the X60 Pro Plus just launched in China. No word on global availability yet, but they went ahead and just packed the top tier chip in there. A couple of other cool specs. 55 watt charging, which isn't the craziest we've seen, but it's pretty nice. 4200 milliamp hour battery and a 50 megapixel Samsung GN1 main sensor. 
It does not have that fancy gimbal stabilization, but it does have optical image stabilization. Okay. Looks to have a pretty cool screen to body ratio with a tiny little hole punch on the front for the front facing camera. 6.56 inch OLED display, 120 hertz refresh rate, starting at $772 US equivalent. Something that stood out to me here was the texture choice on the back, mm. going with that leather-like finish. I'm sure it won't be genuine. It will be some type of vegan leather, they'll call it. You know how that goes well. Yep. Uh, but we have seen that previously. I'm trying to recall the device that I looked at that had that finish. It was probably an Oppo phone, if I remember correctly. What's going on here, Will? Huh? What do you no, think? No, no, I'm just uh, clicking this link here. Oh, yeah. The I'm previous model, to... the X60 and X60 Pro. It is tough to keep it together with the yeah, naming. They launched it last month. And yeah. This looks like a flagship phone. No, it I looks know. Great. It looks great. It looks great, but it's not. it one. doesn't have a flagship processor in it. The new one does, and that's why it's not just the Pro. It's the Pro Plus. Oh. You see, everybody has to do that now. It's not enough to be Pro. You need Pro and then something else. I see. I actually prefer what Samsung does. I've said this before on the show. Just go to Ultra. Ultra. And stop and just get rid of the Pro because Ultra is obviously better than Pro. But anyway, yeah, I don't. I kind of like companies experimenting with these alternative textures on the phone. Like if so, everything doesn't have to be glass. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 This this looks really nice. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm surprised. Looks it's cool. just the shape of it and the the texture, like you said, the vegan leather. It, it could be cool. Yeah, it's not bad. It could be cool. Uh, speaking of the S21 Ultra, here we have a comparison that everybody is concerned with and curious about because Samsung does this thing where in certain markets you get the Qualcomm chip, and people reach out to me about this all the time, saying, "Lou, it's not fair." I'm in Europe. I'm going to be getting the Exynos chip. I know you're saying it's fast and it's a flagship contender, but over here we have to analyze it differently because we have an Ex Exynos chip. And traditionally, the Qualcomm flagship processor has outperformed Samsung's offering. So I understand people making those complaints or having those requests for analysis, but Samsung, it appears in this latest comparison, the new Exynos 2100 versus the Snapdragon 888 has kind of closed the gap a little bit. So we have our speed test here. And if you look at the chart, actually you're looking for lower is better here. So the CPU was tested. Mixed is going to be your CPU and GPU intensive tasks. And then of course the GPU on its own. And you can see the time, the total time at the bottom for this variety of tests. In the CPU only, the Exynos actually wins. Mm. It beats the Snapdragon 888, but once graphics get involved, well, that's where the Snapdragon catches up and gets a better overall time. This is from a fellow YouTuber, so I wanna make sure that that shout out gets in there as well. It is from Speed Test G. What a name. But this is good news for people around the globe that now they're not going to feel so left out because this is pretty comparable performance. And there's other good news too, which is that Sa Samsung may collaborate with AMD in the future on the graphics side, and that may close the gap completely. So you know how I've been saying, Will, it's really getting hot around here if you are Qualcomm. Uh -huh. Because you lost the market share in China because of all the various sanctions. So you're not into Chinese devices anymore. You kind of were, you know, you were the flagship king for a while. But now Samsung is starting to approach over there. And we already know what Apple's doing. So it's a lot of heat believe, if you're Qualcomm. Uh, what about MediaTek? Yeah, Me MediaTek we talked too, about right? uh, yesterday. They're making, they're, they're doing better now. Mostly in the mid-range, but they've gobbled up all that open market in China that's available via those sanction. Uh, speaking of Chinese phones, Honor has announced its first post Huawei phone. Of course, you know that Honor was sold by Huawei. It was a sub-brand of Huawei, but then when the sanctions hit and they'd taken all the, uh, they, I mean, they had a giant target on their back, obviously, most of the Western world, they were like, all right, well, this is ridiculous. How about we just sell the Honor brand so that it can continue to do business and get its hands on parts. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, just operate instead of sitting here 
fading away. So they sold it off to a consortium of Chinese partners. And you know I couldn't miss the word consortium if I had a chance to say it today. So that's why I put that in there. Well, actually, shout out to The Verge. They put it in first. But I believe last time we talked about the acquisition, that word was there as well. They put out a brand new phone. So they're still kicking it. It will have uh, it will be called the V series, but it, it, it in the past that same series has eventually made it to the West in the form of the View device. Oh right. The V40, that's this device here, has a 6.72 inch OLED screen with a 120 hertz refresh rate. It'll have the MediaTek chip that you just mentioned, Dimensity 1000 plus, 50 megapixel sensor, 4000 milliamp hour battery. It can charge wirelessly at 50 watts or with a cable at 66 watts. So that's some fun stuff right there. And of course, as you know, with the Honor brand, it comes in at a value point, starting price around 550 US. Oh. So that's kind of the angle there. It looks like it has two front-facing cameras and once again, a pretty aggressive screen to body ratio. So maybe that makes its way to the rest of the world outside of China. A couple of other specs. Uh, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 storage, or 8 gigs RAM, 256 storage. Elon Musk says he will donate $100 million to whoever invents the best carbon capture technology. I think he put this on Twitter in the form of a tweet, actually. Yes, here's the tweet. I'm donating 100M towards a prize for best carbon capture technology. Now, what this is, Will, is obviously for the environment. He's looking for any technology that can capture carbon dioxide, uh, trapping it directly from the air or just before it gets emitted from factories or power plants. I suppose there could be a variety of proposals for how to do this, but in capturing it, you can obviously avoid having it enter the atmosphere and uh, you know damaging the ozone and all the rest of it. In fact, what they do, Will, after they capture it, they pump it back down into Earth where it can stay. Like get back in there. Yeah, exactly. It can stay hidden in there. Or they can use it for something else. Huh. Now, this article states that they might be able to use it for fizzy drinks. What? I'm not even joking. Carbon? You don't believe me? Most of the captured carbon dioxide will remain underground, but some of it can also be used to make plastics and fizzy drinks. Oh, I did not know that. I mean, they can, it's not like it's dirty. I thought it was, like, polluted. Mm. It's pollution, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, the ozone don't like it, <laughs> but your fizzy drinks do. Sure. Okay. Your belly does, Will. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know that was kind of carbon. funky to see. But anyway, he's been trying to figure out what to do with his money. You know, he's recently the richest guy on planet Earth. I know a lot of that is tied up. This ain't like liquid funds. But he has actually asked, you know, if anybody has any good ideas for how to utilize it. And, you know, he's a little bit unorthodox as far as charity is concerned. And I find this to be an interesting way of of doing it because you're kind of... You're not just handing it over. You're saying, look, I want this cool invention. Right. And you're putting people to work and hopefully generating. Now, the only thing I will say is people go to work on this. It, it, it appears there's only one $100 million prize. So some people may put a lot of work, engineering firms and uh, the rest of it. But you know what? It is a cool way to go about it. I like a yeah. project. I like a task. I like a target. And certainly if it has the potential to improve the environment, then uh, it's hard to be mad at it. And now, you could probably meet Elon Musk. Oh, definitely. I mean, if, if, you're if, if you're getting 100 mil, you're, get, you're doing the meeting. Yeah. He pins a star on your uh, chest there. Gives yeah, you a high yeah. five. But it is interesting the way you said it because like 100 mil just goes into your bank account. Like how does that transaction work? No. He's going to invest 100 mil into the technology. Into, you know, yeah, I don't you know. I don't know. I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, yeah. but you might no, need he like says, a he says plan, donate. Like a Did he say donate? Yeah, something. donate. Donating 100 million towards a prize. So is the prize even bigger? Will he get his pals to chip in as well? Oh, I, yeah. He probably has some uh, hefty pals. You think he's got a few pals? With, uh, big wallets. All right. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, that's what he's up to. Now, speaking of. Elon, Tesla, you know, they had that little issue on their hands with the dash unit, with the display, 
and the recall that was being proposed by the federal transportation people. They, they got too many complaints that the display wasn't working and the display is integral to the, to the usage of the Model S and X. Those were the two before 2018. Those units were a little short on the specs and it was particularly the MCU in older Tesla vehicles. I believe it had limited RAM or limited storage. Either way, it caused an issue where the, the display would no longer power up and it would freeze and have to be rebooted or it could be total failure of the MCU unit. It was a problem with the embedded multimedia card memory. So it was the memory. And what they did was they upgraded that memory on more recent models that no longer had the issue. In the meantime, this proposal for the recall comes out. They're trying to figure out exactly how many people are affected. And prior to that, to them, I suppose, embracing the recall, they did something different that some people don't like very much, which is they just dropped the price of upgrading your own media unit. So previously, it was $2,500 to do so. And they took $1,000 off to make it only $1,500 to go in with your, your old MCU, your old uh, pre-2019 Model S or X and get it upgraded to oh. the new one so you would have no issues. Now, that would come along with some other, some other upgrades too. Shouldn't it be free? Well, in the form of a recall, it would. Yeah. So that's what people are saying. This is a bit slippery here because... They're thinking, wait, shouldn't you just tell us it's a recall because the other one was was junky to begin with? In which case, why am I paying the fifteen hundred? Mm -hmm. But I suppose the argument Tesla could make is they could say, Well, we could have just upgraded your memory so that it would work without all these other enhancements that give you certain I mean, oh. with the new unit, there's other functionality oh. like games and other aspects are upgraded to support some of the newer services. But still, I'm on electric, and you know that's where you got to be when you're trying to do the the electric vehicle news breakdown, and they're not happy about it. They 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 say it should absolutely be a recall, and uh, the N they think the NHTSA that's the group that governs these type of things, traf, uh, the transportation. They think uh, that they should just go in there and, and do the recall. But anyways, in the meantime, I suppose if somebody wanted to expedite the process or wanted that other bunch of features and whatever, I mean, it's 1500 bucks instead of 2500 bucks. Could it be a coincidence? Maybe it's just a coincidence. Well, yeah. I don't know. How about this for an EV? The Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo, which obviously is not out yet, but it was spotted just out there in broad daylight in a parking lot in California, I believe. And it has some crazy looking rims on it. Cool. They look like ninja blades, stars type things. I thought those, those are sharp. Uh -huh. Now the, uh, the cross Turismo, if you're wondering what that means in Porsche land, at least it means it's a hatchback. It's a, uh, you know, yeah. a little bit more cargo room for the road trip, but similar performance, if not identical, maybe it's a little heavier, but to the to the regular version of the Taycan and apparently it will be coming out in that variety of models as well so you'll be able to pick this one up where in the 522 horsepower the regular 4S 670 horsepower turbo and maybe even the 750 horsepower turbo S version oh. of it so i don't think i'm going to trade mine for one of these, but definitely if it's your only car and you want a little more cargo, like you want to put the dog in the back or something, yeah, you have a little more, like the length of the car looks identical, but you just have a little bit more, more height, height in yeah. the back where the hatchback is. So some people might want to go for that. Some people are wi wildly against these things. They mm -hmm. think it's a sports car. What are you doing with the hatchback? But you, you can definitely make the practicality argument. Can you not, Will? Yeah, if you have like a family, you need more storage. Also, the rims, they look kind of cool. Yeah, the rims Are may they only be for the Turismo version. Maybe, but likely it's just the next model year will have that rim option probably for all of them. Oh. So, yeah, I mean, 
Porsche is making some cool looking electric vehicles. You got to say that. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a price tag to go with it, but you you, you got to say that at least. Mm -hmm. uh, this one has frustrated some people. You know, we've been talking so much about PC hardware. Well, gaming hardware in general, not just PC, even console hardware and how it's nearly impossible to get your hands on it. Well, Newegg had an interesting strategy here that they thought would get people, uh, uh, let people have some fun, I guess. But then people were just frustrated, like, wait a second, what are you doing to me? This was a lottery to get a chance to pay full price for limited graphics cards and other components. Right. And people are just really fed up at this point that have been hunting, say, mm -hmm. uh, RTX 3080s, for example, that they're like, now the lottery is for a chance to buy it? Yeah. And I can just imagine, like, they have all the parts, like one person, and then all they need is a GPU. Yes. And they can't get it. That person exists. Yeah. Absolutely. There's many of them. Well, this was called the New Egg Shuffle event, and it invited customers to choose among several bundles. So here's how they did it. <laughs> they... If you look at the screenshots below, it would be a thing where you would be selected in the raffle, essentially, and they would be like, okay, here are your bundle options. So you can't even buy, scroll down a little bit more, and you'll see an RTX, no, right on that, right there at the very bottom of that graphic. So like you could get the RTX, what is it, a 3080 over there, the uh, Strix? That is a 3080 but only as a combo if you also get the motherboard. Right. You see how it was like, I don't know. I can, I can understand people's frustration here. That they're like, I just won this stupid lottery and, and also I can't even just get the GPU. I got to get the bundle together. But here's a quote from Reddit. Exactly what the GPU struggle needed. RNG loot boxes. The problem is you aren't understanding the sense of pride and accomplishment that comes with winning the chance to pay a huge markup for a combo item you don't want. So anyway, gamers are frustrated right now. And you know that if you're new egg, you can lean into the hype. You mm -hmm. could say, man, people want me so bad. They'll probably just take a full price motherboard to go with it because they want it so bad. Because you know companies like Newegg with a reputation, they don't necessarily want to mark up the price of the GPU too much. Actually, this is a moment for me to give a shout out to Canada Computers. Canada Computers, which is the local computer spot. They have locations all over Ontario. They, in Canadian funds, aren't really marking up these GPUs. Now, they sell out right away, but I'm, just, I'm putting them on blast right now because I don't even know if they want this heat. Where people go and looking, you can't buy it online. You have to go to the physical store. And because of COVID, you can't go in right now. So you basically got to go to the front door of the store and say, hey, you got any RTX 30 series cards? But if they do, and you can see there's a couple available in stores over there. If you do the conversion, so take that card on the right. Oh, wow. That was in stock this morning, that Zotac card. That's a 3090. It was in stock this morning, but if you take that price, which is 2059 and convert it to USD, well, because I know the I know the suggested retail price is around 1500 USD for a 3090. And you're looking at 1616. 16. So it's not really marked up and that's at retail. So that's kind of cool. So I'm just saying, like, there you can find some stuff. I know more people are interested in the 3080 than the 3090. Maybe do a quick check on the 3080, because the 3090 is a crazy price tag, obviously. 3080s, any in-store? No, see, those are all out of stock. In-store, out of stock. Anyway, look, this stuff is it's tough to get your hands on. I feel for everybody. I feel for you. Google is threatening to remove its search engine in its entirety from Australia. Whoa, that would be wild. Imagine Whoa. living in a world without Google, Willie Do. It's, that's weird to think mm. about. Uh, apparently, they're just saying, hey, if you make this change in government, we just can't do business here. Apologies. They claim it's not a threat. They just can't survive if this change takes place. The The way this works is they're trying to push something through that... 
would mean that Google would have to pay the creator of an article, the news source of an article, they would have to pay them every single time they showed a link with a little snippet of the news story. Because like, if you think about the way you, you, you use Google News, often you kind of get the gist of it without clicking on the thing. And they're trying to change that because the media business, traditional media business or traditional internet media business is hurting huh. with COVID and everything else and Google is dominant. So I kind of get where they're coming from with the mindset, but it doesn't make any sense. Because at the root of what the internet is, is it's links. Yeah. Th some links you hear to there. It's now the web. <laughs> now, That's the name. If Google had to pay every time it provided a link, it wouldn't. It, I understand that it couldn't be a feasible business. Now, the Australian government is kind of saying, deal with it. Google, you're really rich. We think you can do it. Make it a small amount, something like this. And then they're also kind of being standoffish with Scott Morrison, the Australian prime minister, saying, we don't respond to threats. Oh. Which that was a response to Google saying, hey, if you guys do this change, we might have to be out completely. And so he says, we don't respond to, to threats. Listen to this. Australia makes our rules for things you can do in Australia. That's done in our parliament. It's done by our government. And that's how things work here in Australia. Wow. Damn. So <laughs> she, she, is it she? No, uh, Scott Mel Morrison. Oh. It's a he. Who's Mel Silva? I don't know. Where are, you, where are you seeing that part? New Zealand VP. Oh, okay. So there you go. That's the uh, the vice VP. Oh, that's from the, the Google Australia oh, vice okay. president. So I guess he's not backing down. Scott. Yeah, the prime Morrison. minister of Australia is, is the guy defending Australia and yeah. Australian news and whatever else. Now, Google, for their part, they got a lot of core internet people on their side. In fact, they have Sir Tim... Berners-Lee, the creator of the World Wide Web, he Shout submitted out. his opinion yeah. that this new code risks breaching a fundamental principle of the web by requiring payment for linking between certain content online. Yeah, he's saying you just kill, that's not the web anymore. Yeah, you got to listen to Sir Tim Berners-Lee. I mean, if you, yeah, you got you to Sir in the name. You know? Yeah, you make a good point there. Anyway, it's not just Google that would be impacted by this either. Well, you know, other companies have similar makeups, like Facebook, for example. Right. Tremendous number of links inside of Facebook. So the internet in Australia could change drastically if this actually goes through. Maybe they're trying to see if Google will play along to a point, mm. like call their bluff. Oh, are you really going to leave? You know, are you really going to leave? Yeah. But this is one of those fundamental things that actually could potentially lead to them leaving because they can't they can't be paying per per link and then they make a what what do you call it a splinter net oh wow well done will i didn't th think we were going to get yeah. hit with splinter net today i like that well yeah how about this next one uh president of china shows up in a one thousand dollar parka and boosts shares of the company now you're you know about parkas, right? <laughs> I, I know a thing or two. You heard about you you know Arcteryx, right? Yeah. Yeah, they make Very high popular high quality stuff. Yeah. No. Arguable. Whoa. People. Not me. I think I think they make good stuff. You're taking shots. Shots fired. <laughs> Not me. Uh, I, from I, some people. I never heard somebody say negative things. What did you hear? Uh, that it's uh, a oh. hype brand. Oh, yeah, it's overpriced. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've heard the same thing, yeah. That's fine, but I think it actually works. I mean, this guy, you think he's rocking that subpar stuff? He rock whatever he wants. Look yeah. at him. You see the way he's wearing that jacket right there? Yeah. I mean, is he cozy? Very. Is he comfy? Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, so he's wearing a high-end Arcteryx parka while inspecting the site of the 2022 Winter Olympics. And this drove up parent company Anta Group's share price big time. They're coming for the likes of Nike and Adidas. They want to become China's top sportswear label. Now, you may not know this, but that group that owns Arcteryx, Chinese group came in with like $5 billion oh. and bought 
a number of different brands. Arcteryx, based in North Vancouver, British Columbia. Shout out British Columbia as well, I should say. But it wasn't just their brand that was purchased. Listen to this for a second. Let me tell you. I got to get to the bottom of it. Oh, here we go. Not yet. Well, that looks pretty comfy. It was, oh, here Even we go. It's posse. Wilson, Solomon, Peak Performance, and Arcteryx was purchased for $5.2 billion. And before that, the company, the sportswear brand, Anta, wasn't known outside of China at all. But they pick up those brands and they're like, well, bingo. Now people, people know us worldwide. And originally, that group of brands was headquartered in Finland. Now, they actually have about 15% of the market, huh. I believe, for high-end sports gear in China. Hmm. $43 billion annually. It's behind Adidas at 20% and behind Nike at 23%. Wow. But that's pretty close. And they're the official sponsor of this upcoming Olympics in 2022, which is a Winter Olympics. So these parkas gonna be everywhere. Like, look at the picture with the whole posse. They all got the brands on. Yeah. Now they all took a different a different yeah. look to it. Yeah. Because I know- they have their own style. The president, he put that one on and he was like, you guys gotta do something a bit different. Yeah. Like a Korean K-pop band. It's gotta be some different, uh, uh, identities, personalities. Yes. And so his was the cozy, the cozy plain, because he's usually wearing the pl pretty plain clothes, uh -huh. like a white shirt and a suit or something. No logo. No logo. His is ultimate plain. Now, s some of the other guys, the guys on the, on the far sides, they went a little puffier with the, you know, the stitching like that. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's a good look when you see the whole package deal together. But anyway, they the stock goes through the roof because the Chinese public they see that and they go, that jacket keeps him warm. Uh -huh. I'm about to I'm about to splurge on a parka. Yeah, and they're not cheap either. They're like you said, a thousand dollars for at least this one. Look at that parka. You can't find it right now. They I might look have. Good. To, I might show up in this parka right All here. All right. Yeah. You see what I mean? Buy that, a few. That's the effect that happens right there. One guy wears a parka. And look what takes place. It's lightweight, lean design, generous down insulation, and waterproof, waterproof Gore-Tex exterior. So all the athletes, by the way, all the Chinese athletes are going to be wearing it as well. And they've worn it in the past. So I didn't even know China had such a play in the premium hype beast category. But they got to play. Right and the on. president himself, he got to play. Well, he do. Yeah. Alphabet is shutting down. Loon, and I don't know if you remember this. I feel like we probably covered it on Lou later about a billion years ago, even though we've only been doing it for a couple. And this was the hot air balloons carrying internet to remote places. Oh, right. Which now sounds really low tech next to what Elon's doing with the satellite yeah. Starlink. But it actually was pretty cost effective for what it was. And when they were talking rural, they weren't talking like $600 startup fee for somebody in Canada like yourself or somebody up north. They were talking about really underserviced lo locations like they went to places in kenya and actually were providing a lot of connectivity for people with these balloons floating around mm. and you can see what they looked like it was kind of a cool project it was part of you know how uh, alphabet or google they would have i actually i think it was called x the experimental stuff and they would have these kind of moonshot projects. Like just somebody could go, a group would go and work on something that maybe turns into something or maybe it doesn't. Well, this is one of the times when it didn't really turn into much. There was not enough adoption, I guess, or they weren't happy with uh, what they were able to accomplish completely. Even though you can see that, that in Kenya, they had 35 balloons and they covered a 50,000 square kilometer area providing, they also were able to provide internet to places that had hurricanes. Uh, different different types of natural disasters. You can imagine hmm. the grid goes down with they the flood. They just a couple balloons. A couple balloons come. Everybody's phones come back on yeah. and they can communicate real quick, assuming they have some battery battery life in there. But it is some cool technology. It's kind of like some new technology and old technology together. But 
it's it's not going to work anymore. They're going to shut it down and move on to the next moonshot by the looks of it. This next one might might spell bad news for crypto. This is the new treasury nominee. Her name is Janet Yellen. And I believe Biden is about to pick her, or at least he wants to pick her, to be uh, the, tr- the treasury, what is it, secretary? Is that what they're called? Anyway, uh, she's a senator right now, and she's not a big crypto. Yeah, Joe Biden's pick to lead the treasury department. Uh, they asked her about cryptocurrencies. They said, hey, cryptocurrencies could be used by terrorists and other criminals. And she said, cryptocurrencies are a particular concern. Mm. I think many are used, at least in a transaction sense, mainly for illicit financing. Mm. Ooh, crypto holders shiver at these type of words. Yeah. She said she wanted to examine ways in which we can curtail their use and make sure that money laundering doesn't occur through those channels. So... I don't know that it's a target at crypto completely, but it's like, hey, I don't know. How about some regulation? A lot of this stems from the anonymity aspect. I can move around large sums of money and you don't even know who I was. Mm -hmm. So they're saying like, hey, man, if you, for example, you go take 10 grand cash out of the bank, they're going to mark, they're going to put your name down. They're going to say Willie Do was here. Yeah. They say, Mr. Willie Do, 10 grand. And they're going to send it to the government potentially. You're going to, maybe the feds are going to come check on you. Uh Uh-oh. Well, if you do it a lot or if if it's connected to some other activities, all Uh of a sudden you're hiring a bunch of weird people. and they're like, I do sometimes. Yeah, as you might. So that's why they look at you sideways when you come in for a bunch of cash. Now, if you're in the crypto world, you say, that's my money. Those are my keys. You don't tell me what you're doing when. I don't got to ask you and you don't need my name. That's the, you know, crypto mindset can be if you want it to be. Yeah. And so there is that crossover there where the government's like, at least in this case, what about money laundering? But the crypto guys would say, no, 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 that's how they get their foot in the door. They want a piece, who knows how, what they want to do with it. So either way, there was already some extra attention going to the crypto prior to uh, this new development. Like even Trump's outgoing team was looking into it. They, They already proposed a new set of rules to look at cryptocurrency based money laundering but it looks like she's she wants to amp it up we'll have to wait and see to what extent but uh yeah i mean crypto people are afraid of a couple things they're afraid afraid of the double spend as we referenced recently yeah and they're afraid of governments getting in their way but they're a big fan of three dollar transfer fees for big, big yeah, amounts of money. 160 yeah, $160 million. Although, you know, Kirk was telling me that he was trying to buy some Ethereum yesterday, and yeah. he paid an enormous, an enormous transaction fee. Is I didn't, it percentage of the... I don't know why he, I don't know why he paid so much. I don't know what, what where he was doing the transaction, but he claims yeah. that his $100 purchase turned into about $67 worth of Ethereum Whoa. at that moment. I think he got swindled. I don't know what took place, but... Uh, yeah, no. Typi- typically speaking, it's a it's a an economical way to to move funds. Uh-huh. Dave Chappelle tests positive for COVID nineteen. Yeah. I'm I'm sure you've seen this this story. I was following because I was seeing how Rogan was having all these shows with the rapid testing in yeah. Austin. They were having a residency there. They were just living it up. Uh-huh. It seemed it, it felt COVID free. It was like wow. Yeah, a little. You know what it was like? It looked, this is me at a distance on social media. It looked like when you're in the desert and you see the mirage over in the distance where things are, nor- you know, the COVID version of the mirage in the desert is just seeing normal life, like people hanging out uh-huh. yeah. and going to a comedy show or at a bar or something. Of course, the actual mirage is water and palm trees in the middle of a desert. Uh-huh. So that's what the appearance was. But as you can tell, uh, nobody is fully immune here now i am sure that Chappelle's gonna gonna figure this one out but it has obviously put a damper on what they were working on there in austin texas yeah, because so, yeah i mean he canceled all his shows canceled all his he shows no rogan choice. canceled everything and the crazy part is right before his news comes out i saw a hot post on rogan's instagram himself Chappelle, elon musk grimes 
few more people in there. They were just having a time. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if you can find it there. Yeah, check out this post. Unbelievable. Yeah, you got uh, Michelle Wolf. You got uh, Ron White, Dave Chappelle. It's a. Uh, it's oh Donnell Rawlings. Look at this group. They're Elon you know, Grimes. And and anyway, so Chappelle just test positive for COVID. You start wondering about all the people that are chilling there. Yeah. Just moments before hanging out and this also you know what this also exposes is the imperfect nature of the rapid testing mm. and i'm sure people are going to come out the woodwork and 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 say this type of thing but you know it's obviously nothing in life is without its risks you try to minimize the risks it looks like the risks were minimized for a period of time and who knows i should also put this in in there maybe he doesn't even acquire the virus at those shows Maybe it's somewhere else in life that he encounters the virus. You know, maybe it's in his household in some other way. You don't know. But for the time being, the shows are canceled. Refunds will go to the ticket holders. And we'll have to wait and see what develops after after this goes down. But he's a pretty high-profile guy, you know. Yeah. Dave Chappelle. Get well. Get well soon. Absolutely. German scientists have figured out how to make paralyzed mice walk again. Incredible stuff, Will. I hope you can play a little bit of the video because it is so cool to see it. The mouse is paralyzed. The bottom legs, look at this, man. Not working. Now, you know a mouse is a mammal, Willie. Do you know a mouse is not that different than you? Did you know that? Oh, you're asking me? Yeah. Um, look, look at the back legs. No, I didn't. Look at the no. back legs starting to work. Man, I love that. I love when the science comes together in such a fashion, in such an area where it just feels, you feel helpless, you know? A lot of people endure spinal cord injuries, car accidents, things like this, Will. Mm -hmm. And it has a huge impact on their lives. And so to see the research and to see an impact, now I know it's a mouse and a mouse is not a person, but they're not, but it's a good sign. And the way they were able to do this, by the way, now normally those nerve fibers, Spinal stuff, it can't regrow. Huh. And so once it's severed or injured, and I don't know to what extent the damage exists on this particular mouse compared to maybe some other people that have been paralyzed. But these researchers man managed to stimulate the paralyzed mice's nerve cells to regenerate using a designer protein. So what they did is... Uh, designer protein? That's right. Like Supreme? Yeah, that's right. They put some Suprema. No, Arcteryx. <laughs> yeah. In this way, with a relatively small intervention, we stimulate a very large number of nerves to regenerate. And that is ultimately the reason why the m m uh, mice can walk again. The paralyzed rodents received the treatment, started walking after two to three weeks. You inject carriers of genetic information into the brain to produce the protein called hyperinterleukin-6, according to the university's website. They're next up, they're going to see if it can work on larger mammals, pigs, dogs, or primates, for example. This is crazy stuff, Will. Yeah. I mean, this is, uh, when the science works in this way, it can really be a kind of an uplifting feeling when you see uh, something that you previously perceived as being insurmountable, and then you start to see si uh, signals like this, and you're like, damn, man. I mean... Everybody thinks their work is important. But these, these dudes yeah. in that moment, when they see those legs move on the mouse, that work is important. Yes, definitely.